Before we get stuck into today's video, I want to give a shout out to Trevor. Trevor is from Indiana, uh, United States, and he's watched the channel for some time. And he noticed that I've got a lot of NBA jerseys that I'm an NBA fan. And he also noticed that I don't have any jerseys from the Indiana Pacers. So he wanted to give me a gift. Uh, he got me a Indiana Pacers jersey. Uh, I got the package today. It took a little while. There was some sort of complications with you know, the courier and whatnot. Um, but I got it today. And I haven't opened it. I uh, got it after the gym today. And so I thought I was going to open it with you guys. Uh, I don't know who is it, which player it is. Um, but I'm very, very excited. And I just wanted to say thank you, Trevor, man. Like, I, this is the first time anybody has given me a gift like this on YouTube. Um, I love NBA jerseys. A lot of my family members know, you know, I'm not a kid anymore. But if anyone's ever going to get me a... A present, an NBA jersey is always something that I, that I, I don't know, I enjoy, especially, you know, jerseys from back in the day, you know, uh, I still like jerseys from today and whatever, but for some reason, jerseys like in the, I don't know, early 2000s, you know, when I was a kid, when I was dreaming about the NBA, those, uh, those NBA teams, that era for some reason just sticks with me. So every time I see it, like a Vince Carter, a Trace McGrady, a Ben Wallace, Tim Duncan, like all these types of jerseys, it just takes me back to those memories of those teams and all that stuff. So let's open up the box together and uh, see what Trevor got me. Now, how do I open this thing? Oh, goodness. Which way are we going to go? Uh huh. Let's go this way. Oh man, the packages are pretty good, didn't they? Oh, hopefully that's done it. Eh? Let's have a look if this will open up. Oh, I didn't do anything here. Oh, can I open it? Which way is it going, man? Can't open it. Oh, I think I know where it is. Oh, dude. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> this is epic. Wow. Look at that. Jalen Rose. Wow, man. <sighs> Trevor, man. Thank you for this. This is absolutely epic. Um, man, this is taking me back to that Indiana Pacers team. Was it the year 2000, 99, 2000, 2001? Jermaine O'Neal. Ron Artest, um, who else was on that team? Reggie Miller was on that team, surely as well. Yeah. This was a, 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 a really, really good team. And this is like a incredible, good looking jersey. I remember when I was playing 2K and NBA Live back then, I think it was NBA Live back then. I always used to pick the paces because I loved the jersey. Dude, you hooked me up big time, man. Wow. Wow. Trevor, man. Thank you. Thank you for the present. Um, I know you've been watching the channel for quite some time. I frankly couldn't believe it when you said to me that you were going to organize the jersey to come all the way from over there to here. Um, it's really appreciated, man. Really, thank you for this. I'm going to wear this uh, at the next opportunity. So as, as you know... Um, I'm in the in the kind of middle of that 200 kilo streak, uh, so I want to wear it where there's a five. So if I get to a you know 25 days in a row, I'm going to wear this. 
Um, I feel like I want to wear it right now, man. I feel like I just want to wear it right now. What an epic jersey. Epic. Oh, 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 oh. That is sick, man. Sick. Trevor, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wanted to give you a shout out for this because this is not a, a small gesture at all. I mean, you, you got me a, a Hardwell Classic as well. So this is a pretty expensive jersey, man. So most of the jerseys that I have are not this. You know, uh, this is an expensive style of jersey. So I'm gonna remember this, man. I'm gonna remember this. Um, remember you, Trev, for doing this. It's such a kind gesture. Um, I almost feel like I don't want to wear it because it looks so epic. I don't want to damage it. Jalen Rose. <laughs> Thank you, man. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Today's video, you'll see in a sec, I'll, I'll start the, 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 the voiceover, but it was a really good day. Um, I hit a PR, so I did 200 kilos for three. Um, and I'm happy that I've uh, received this on a, such a good day like today. Thank you, Trevor. Hope you enjoyed the video, man. After yesterday's grinder rep, I had my doubts about today. I really thought that today might be the day that I actually dropped the bar. I mean, yesterday the bar slowed down like, man, I felt like I was in the middle of that squat for like 10 minutes, but I got it. And it made me smile after the rep and I watched that rep hundreds of times by now. And what I loved about that rep the most from yesterday is the fact that I didn't compromise my back. My back was strong throughout. The bar basically stopped halfway and I didn't round, I didn't buckle under the weight. All the joints, all the positions stayed the same and I stayed patient. And when you have that confidence under the bar, when basically shit's, you know, grinds to a halt and you're still in that optimal position, in that perfect uh, uh, spine alignment, that gives me confidence to grind, right? This is the biggest thing that I've always said is that I'm afraid of grinding because what if I get caught out of place and I do my back in, right? I'm, I don't have time for that. I, I can't get injured. I don't want to get injured. I want to lift like that. Yesterday caught me by surprise, but I stayed with it. Uh, so that gave me a lot of confidence to come in today and give it another good goal. Whatever happens, happens. Went to the gym today. Uh, part of me was like, if I'm going to fail, let's fail at the gym. <laughs> Because I don't want to be dropping 200 kilos at home. I have not done that in a long time. And it's like a freaking earthquake if I do that. So I went to the gym. I'm like, if I'm going to fail, let's fail out of the gym. It's a platform. I'll drop it. It's in the gym. It's fine. So one less thing to worry about. Got to the gym. Did some jumps. Got to the bar. Started warming up. And I haven't been at this particular gym for quite a long time. It's been easily, basically pushing a year now. A uh, bunch of new equipment, and I feel like they've, I don't know where the freaking plates are, but a lot of the blue plates were not available. So I started mixing and matching, right? So I did two blues, then I went to a yellow, 15 kilo, then a couple of greens and whatever. Uh, so it was kind of an un unorthodox, uh, you know, build up to me, to that two, for, for me, for that 200. So it kind of felt a little weird. I got to 200, felt good. I, I, I said to myself, let's not rack the bar give everything I've got for 200 and we'll go from there. I got the first rep and I was happy. <laughs> I was happy because, you know, I'm, I'm fresh in my mind from how yesterday I felt. And yesterday I felt like a freaking wrestling match for that one rep. Felt not too bad. So I thought maybe I can replicate that again. Hit the second one and the third, I was like, let's go for the third, man. This is unbelievable. The third slowed down a fair bit. But the whole time, once again, the whole time I was able to hold that positioning. And I don't know what part of my training has allowed me to do this, to have that core stability, whether it's jumping, whether it's the push-ups, I don't know. But my core seems to be stronger than before. I now have this ability to grind. Um, you don't want to be grinding every single day, but you want to know, you want to have the confidence that if the bar stops, we can work it out. You know, you know you're not a glass, what's it called? A glass cannon, whatever, you know. You got a big punch, but if there's trouble, you shatter, right? And so that's kind of how I felt for a very long time. I developed this speed out of the hole, and if that speed dissipates, I'm screwed. I just go back down, and then I drop the bar. But now I feel like I, I get enough speed. I do slow down in the middle portion like everyone does. I guess not everyone, but definitely me. 
but I was able to grind it out. And this grinding feeling allows me to go, okay, I can get another one of those reps and fight through, right? It's not just a quick existence, this squat. I can actually sit there and fight. And to fight is like, I don't wanna say you wanna fight every single day, but you wanna know that if push comes to shove, you can stay in these uncomfortable positions and survive, um, which is interesting. It's really interesting, you know, today's day 15 or 200 kilos in a row. Yesterday was by far the worst day. I've had a couple of bad days this week. Uh, started getting worried uh, that it was gonna end. Today's day 15, tomorrow's gonna be day 16, which is gonna match the previous streak. So I'm pumped up for tomorrow. Uh, last few days, um, I've introduced another freaking exercise into the mix, and that's probably, um, I wanna say, that's probably what's ex you know explaining, at least to me, what happened yesterday in yesterday's slow rep. I did that whole sled uh, walking, uh, sled pulling uh, yesterday. I went to the tire shop, got a, got a used tire, you know, hooked up a, a bolt through it, got a chain, got a belt and all that stuff, started walking in the, in the park near my house. And uh, I did that for about 20 minutes, so 10 minutes one way, 10 minutes the other way, got home, started you know, working out, had the world's freaking grindiest squat, uh, at least for me. And so I thought, yeah, definitely what's changed is the fact that I did that walk. I did that sled pull. Um, and then I did it again after yesterday's session. And that was it. That's all I did yesterday. I did you know, sled, squat, sled. Today I woke up and I was like, let's go straight to the gym and see what I can do with 200. If I fail, I fail. I fail out of the gym, whatever. Um, went pretty good. Came home. I actually did some deadlift uh, today as well. Uh, got home today. You know, got in the house, dropped my gear off. Uh, and I said to my daughter, let's go to the park. <laughs> she went with me yesterday as well. So this time around, uh, she wanted to be in the tire. So I thought to myself, man, like we tried this yesterday and I couldn't budget. Like it was way too heavy for me. I, there's no way I could survive 10 minutes pulling a sled with her in it. So then I thought, okay, I'm going to take the 10 kilo out of the tire and uh, I'll put you in it. And I kind of like made a, a spot for her to sit and whatever. But then I, I weighed her before I did that. So she weighs 17 kilos. The, dump, the, the plate that I was using yesterday was a 10 kilo plate. So now it's 17 kilos. So it's seven kilos more than yesterday with her in it. And... Uh, my God, did I freaking struggle today. I almost freaking asked her to get out of the tire and walk home with me because it was that hard. It was, I don't know what it is, you know, maybe the tire is getting more grippy now because it's kind of sanded down the side wall and there's more contact surface with the ground. I don't know what it is, but you know, the extra seven kilos I understand, but my Lord, it felt like I was working so hard today. Um, I started going you know, facing forwards, you know, you know, pulling the sled. And then after like three or four minutes, I was spent. So then I had to like stop. And uh, at that point I was like, okay, let me just turn around and do the reverse sled pull. I don't know what it's called. Uh, the first person I saw do this was uh, Denise Overtoes guy. And he talks about the, the vastus medialis, that teardrop muscle, and it's really healthy for the knees. So I started doing that purely just to, you know, keep the tire moving and also rest my calves, rest the, the, the glutes and all that stuff. Uh, but I quickly <laughs> learned that that was actually not a rest either. So going in reverse uh, fries the freaking calves. So my calves today have been demolished. Fries the calves and also fries the quads. And so any which way you face with, these, with the sled pull, uh, it's not gonna be comfortable. So I got home absolutely freaking spent absolutely spent uh yesterday i spent an hour and a half listening to a podcast by louis simmons i have seen this podcast i'm not kidding you when i say man at least absolute bare minimum five times and he's got many different podcasts i think yesterday the topic was deadlifting i uh, was it squats the night before was squats i don't know there's he's got podcasts that are, that are called whatever number and then you know squat and then whatever number, deadlift. I think I did the deadlift yesterday. Um, and he spoke about how he was big on pulling sleds. And he, there was a few stories that he shared in this podcast, but one particular story he said was that he didn't do any deadlifting for about six weeks at all. He didn't do any deadlifting. 
he was just focusing heavily, heavily on his sled pulls. And then somebody came over to the gym or whatever and challenged him to a deadlift and he pulled like 760 or something like that or 710 or whatever. I don't know what he pulled. It was in the sevens, something freaking impressive. Um, so he was like, you know, basically explaining that he swears by these sleds. Yesterday I did sleds before the training session and it affected my strength immensely. Did it again uh, after the session. Today I've rocked up and I've got this confidence, right? Even more so confidence under the bar in an awkward bent over position. And what's a deadlift? It's a bent over awkward position. So I'm not like, I don't want to make, you know, causation after freaking two seconds, right? Um, once again, who am I compared to Louis Simmons? But I feel like there's something there. There's something there. You know, he gets put into the box of GPP. Sled pulling is about GPP, blah, blah, blah. And GPP doesn't really get you strong. Like, yeah, blah, blah. it's kind of fluff, right? It's like GPP. Walking is GPP, for God's sake, right? I think it's more than that. I think what it does, it, it really trains the glutes, the posterior chain, the hamstrings. Uh, really trains the side glutes particularly and for me for whatever reason he absolutely murders my calves not the gastroc at the top but like midway down the lower leg soleus it was like absolutely getting annihilated uh, so as i'm pushing this thing pulling this thing whatever you want to call it all i'm thinking about is oh my god my, my achilles is going to come off the bone like he was that pumped now i've done calf raises seated standing and, you know, you kind of rush to the end and you walk it off. This thing is like, I have to get this tire home. And so I'm exhausted, but step after step after step, you're just continuously getting smashed in the calf. Now, I know the way Bluey teaches uh, sled pulling is heel strike, heel strike, heel strike. I was doing that. I'm heel striking. But, you know, as you're, I don't know what the phase of walking that is, but as, as the foot travels underneath you and, and behind you, you need to have some sort of, you know, plant flexion. You can't walk without your calves, right? So, I think it's there's something to it. Um, I've said to myself, I want to do this every day. Yeah, I know, it sounds crazy. It sounds freaking crazy. Everything with me sounds crazy. But there's been a few fellas that I've been chatting to um, on, on Patreon and on um, YouTube uh, who've been talking about sled pooling every single day. And one of the fellas particularly... Uh, said something really interesting is that he wasn't getting sore from it at all because sled pulling is all concentric there's no eccentric loading when you're pulling a sled which is really something very interesting as you know we all know that um, what gets us sore in movements is the eccentric portion that's for whatever reason that elongation of muscles under load is what causes the most amount of muscle damage and produces soreness sled pulling is all concentric there's no lowering phase once you finish the gate cycle the thing stops until your next step so because of that you know there's a really good opportunity for you to have really high frequency with that because if you're not going to get sore you can continuously keep coming back and keep hitting the concentric the concentric the concentric yesterday i thought after those two freaking 20 minute walks i thought i was going to wake up this morning really sore based upon how i felt as i was doing it Woke up this morning, felt perfectly fine. Like my calves are not sore, work that out. My calves are not sore, my glutes are not sore, my lower back is not sore, my quad, nothing is sore. I feel good, but I've done so much work yesterday, right? So much freaking work. I, I felt like I was in war yesterday, especially the second session after the, the squatting. And I, you know, yesterday I barely got home. Um, today, you know, after today's squat session, even worse, like with my daughter sitting at the back, you know, the extra seven kilos, my God, like it was the first time I started, like I said, going in reverse, going forwards, every which way I was trying to like find any comfortable position I could. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, tomorrow I'm probably not going to be sore again because once again, it's a concentric phase of movement. Um, now, I don't know what the sign says about this. Can you get sore at all? If you just do concentric, um, I'm not sure. Like in my mind, I feel like I want to say yes. Yes, it also gets you sore, but you need maybe more volume uh, compared to when you're doing also eccentrics. So it's a really, really interesting side project. Um, you know, the jumping is proven to me. The jumping is going to stay as my warm up. I mean, 
a large part of this streak, the 200 kilo streak, the 15 days in a row of hitting 200, the, 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 the vast majority of reasons of why I'm able to do this is because I have this now perfect freaking warm up where I fire up my nervous system, perfect to getting underneath the bar. So most days I do 10 sets of three of jumps. Um, some days if I feel really sluggish, I'll do five sets of five just to get a bit more volume in, get a bit more, more of a pump, you know, get a muscular kind of response. Uh, but most times it's 10 sets of three, get under the bar and the bar feels light, I feel alert, I feel awoken, uh, the bar just feels lighter, I can move quickly and that quick movement translates into me hitting a freaking near maximum weight every single day. So that's proven to me. Then I do the squats and then after, now I feel like I found a perfect way after, like the last uh, thing of, this, uh, of, of, of the session, each session, I can go on to the park and pull asleep. Even if I go to the gym, doesn't matter. Before, before dinner, I can go out there for 20 minutes with my kids, go out there, out in the nature, in the open. I can go and freaking pull asleep. Uh, so I feel like in, in the last two weeks, I've discovered two wonderful things. Um, which is just incredible, like incredible. One gets me really fired up the train and another one gets me really, really worked out, gets huge amounts of GPP without any soreness. And you guys know me, I love, absolutely love high frequent training, high frequency training. It's always kind of really aligned up with me really well. A lot of things you can't do every single day because of the soreness, like, if you're gonna do good mornings every day, I've tried that, you, you get broken down, man. Like you get absolutely broken down. Once again, eccentric phase. RDLs, what else is really good for posterior chain? You name it, block pulls, you know, rack pulls, deficit pulls, whatever. All of that stuff is really, really, really expensive because there's an eccentric portion, I think. I think that's the biggest reason. With these freaking sled pulls, you're working the posterior chain with high frequency without any Soreness. Now, obviously, soreness is not the be, be all end all, right? Like, there's more things impacting somebody's recovery. The concentric can also get you tired, but the soreness is not going to be there. And so it gives you this feeling like it's not obstructing the following session. Because when you're sore, you can't, you're, you're all tight and, you know, you're bound up, you can't get into positions, you can't get into an ATG position, you're tipping forward, all sorts of things. I know when I'm sore in my hamstrings, I, I can't squat for shit. I mean, that's been my experience. But this thing, the sled, the pool, the tire pool, whatever you want to call it in my case, man, you're getting all this work in without any cost. That to me is incredible. Incredible. And I've heard this a million times before. Um, but once again, you can't try everything at once. Um, I got so hot on it um, probably three years ago. Three, two, three years ago, or three years ago, probably before the Squad Everyday journey started. Um, and I went, I got a tie, got home. This is where I bought the chain and, and, the, and the towing belt, whatever it's called. I rigged it up and I, I did like, I think two sessions and I gave it up. I thought, oh, this is a little bit whack. I was kind of like, you know, it's kind of weird walking down the street with this behind me or whatever. And I didn't have any soreness. So it didn't feel like I did anything and I just kind of gave it up. But over the, over the last couple of years that I've continued to listen to Louis Simmons, continued to evolve my understanding of training and powerlifting and strength and all that stuff, now I understand the real value of this. The real value of this. Um, you can go for a run, you can go for a walk, you can go for a hike, or you can get yourself a freaking sled and train your posterior chain really, really well. And the, the results are proven. Like, you know, if, if you know, the world's strongest gym at least back then, Louis Simmons times, if they were doing it, geez, man, you know, and Louis Simmons used to rave about this, rave, you know, what did he used to say all the time? The reverse hyper, goated, for, you know, according to him, and this freaking walking sled, and then both of them look funny to me, right? Like, you know, if you're, you know, walking into this, you know, type of training for the first time, you're like, what the hell is this, man? This doesn't look like anything. There's no freaking weight. What is this? There's no weight attached. What's, what's going on? It seems like it's fluff, but it's actually really, really beneficial. Um, so anyway, I feel like I've, I'm set now. I've got the jumps, I've got the squats, I've got the sled pulls, I've got the bodyweight squats going on in the background as well with the push-ups. Um, 
Today I was actually supposed to get push up there, I just realized. But I didn't. Uh, I did sled pulls. So maybe tomorrow morning I'll, uh, I'll wake up and start cranking out 35 down or something like that with the push ups. That's still going well. I still feel like I'm filling out my, my shoulder girdle and all of that. So that's kind of feeling good. So yeah, uh, I, I've, I've basically locked myself into a really nice, really, really nice position here. Um, really getting a positive training effect. This is a special, special time. Whenever this journey ends, this particular streak, I will be reading a lot through these two weeks. And I've been writing notes here and there. As soon as something comes up in my mind, as soon as I feel something, a thought, a feeling, I'll write it down. I will be studying this period for some time. And I, I'm in the moment right now, right? So I don't want to get too debriefy right away. But I feel like the whole thing is as a result of the jumping. Perfect freaking warm up. Peaks your body. You're able to hit very impressive weights, really high percentages. Come back and do them again the following day. Wow, that's special. Anyway, guys, appreciate all of you guys. Um, in particular, Trevor, you've made my freaking day today with this jersey. Thank you so much for the present, man. Uh, it really means a lot to me, man. Really means a lot to me, especially, you know, the effort you made, you know, doing this from, from freaking another continent. Um, you're an absolute beast for that. Really appreciate you, man. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hello, Mito. Hello.